The first section of a fugue is the exposition, where each voice enters in turn with the subject. Then the second entry, which is called the answer, replies in the dominant key. Succeeding entries follow, alternating tonic and dominant. With many subjects, this alternation of subject and answer in the exposition is smooth and causes no difficulties. However, the answers to some subjects produce odd results. Here's an example from Bach's Organ Prelude and Fugue in C minor, BWV 537. Listen to the effect of literally transposing this subject to the dominant. The fifth at the start of the subject, CG, produces an odd effect in the answer since the leap of the fifth highlights D, the supertonic, in the answer. What Bach actually does is this. The subtle change at the start of the answer, leaping from G to C instead of to D, makes the exposition as a whole flow more smoothly. It's tonally more coherent. Note that the rest of the answer is transposed literally to the dominant as usual. This kind of adjustment to the head of the subject is called a tonal answer. What's essential here is that, if a change is needed, it be made in a way that doesn't attract attention. Distorting the subject in any obvious way would simply substitute one problem for another one. There are four kinds of subject. Let's look at each of them. 1. Here the head of the subject does not feature a prominent melodic fifth or fourth between tonic and dominant, so no change is needed at all. This is called the real answer. The second kind of subject is the one we saw at the start of this lesson. A leap at the start of the subject from tonic to dominant, or vice versa, is changed so that a fifth becomes a fourth, or vice versa. Since exchanging one leap for another stays within the category of close motivic variations, it goes virtually unnoticed by the listener. This is the simplest kind of tonal answer. The third kind of subject also has a clear movement between tonic and dominant to start, but it's filled in with passing notes, etc. The Bach G minor organ fugue, BWV 524, that we looked at in the last lesson, is a good example. Here the answer is transposed a fourth down, from G minor to D minor. Only the first note of the answer is modified, becoming a G instead of the expected A. This makes a smoother passage from subject to answer. Once again, the point is to make the change pass unnoticed. The best places to make these adjustments imperceptibly are usually either when the rhythmic values change or when the subject has a leap. If there is absolutely no way to make the change without attracting listeners' attention, it's better to have a real answer that is to say no changes at all, than a clumsy tonal answer. The final situation involves a modulating subject. If the subject, and we're no longer talking about the head of the subject, but rather the main body of the melody, if it modulates internally to the dominant, the answer must modulate back to the tonic. Since the two modulations are not identical, up a fifth versus up a fourth, it becomes necessary to make a change at the point where the subject modulates. The head of the subject may or may not already have been altered according to the three first three situations above. For the modulation, once again, make the change as subtle as possible. Here's an example from Bach's B minor fugue in the first volume of the Waltembert Clavier. The subject modulates from B minor to finish in F sharp minor.
This example has a simple change at the start of the answer, like the one in the G minor fugue above. But since the subject also modulates to the dominant, if we just transpose the subject literally, the answer would modulate from F sharp minor to C sharp minor, leading the rest of the exposition astray. So Bach substitutes a leap of a third for the descending second between the fourth and fifth notes in the subject, allowing the answer to modulate smoothly back to the tonic. Although tonal answer is a technique mainly used in fugue, the ability to subtly change a theme so as to fit it comfortably into a new harmonic context is useful in many other situations, including many that aren't even contrapuntal. A composer needs to become a very good judge of what kinds of changes attract attention. In other words, what will be salient to a listener in a given musical situation? When a given subject requires a tonal answer, the counter subject, if there is one, may also need similar treatment. As a whole, a fugal exposition will present the subject as many times as there are voices. If there's a counter subject, it will be present at all the entries after the first one. Here's the overall tonal plan of a normal exposition. 1. Subject alone in voice 1 in the tonic. 2. Answer in voice 2 in the dominant, accompanied by the contra subject in voice 1. 3. Subject in voice 3 in the tonic, accompanied by the counter subject in voice 2. Voice 1 is now free, and this alternation will go on. Occasionally, Bach will reverse the tonal plan of the entries after the first two voices for harmonic or melodic reasons. For a four-voice fugue, that would give, as an overall plan, tonic, dominant, dominant, tonic, instead of the more common tonic, dominant, tonic, dominant. One last point about the exposition. There is sometimes a little bridge between the second and third entries and or the third and fourth entries. This is done to make the overall proportions less regular and predictable and to allow for more gradual modulation between entries. This kind of bridge is called a codetta. Here's an example of a whole exposition in three parts, including a codetta. The codetta here simply continues the last part of the subject in a sequence, accompanied by the motive first heard at the end of measure 1. Note that when the third entry arrives, the first part becomes free, but given the busyness of the subject and counter subject in the other two parts, it's limited to a fairly simple neutral line. Students should examine other expositions in the Wall Tempered Clavier Fugues, noting their harmonic organization, whether or not they include a codetta, what material is used in the codetta if there is one as well as what motives appear in the free parts later in the exposition. There are many possible variations in the details of how to organize an exposition. For Bach, each fugue is a real, serious musical composition to be worked out in ways that fit the character of the subject and the counter-subject if there is one. Once having examined several Bach fugues like this, the students return to the counter-subjects written for Lesson 17 and develop some of those combinations into full-fledged expositions. Pay special attention to the details of the joints between the entries so as to make the overall effect as smooth as possible. When making the answer, first transpose it literally to the dominant and then make any necessary changes if a tonal answer is appropriate. Finally, write for real instruments or voices. The goal is to compose something that really sounds good.